The Ray begins with Ray Anderson, the founder and CEO of Interface, the world's leader in designing and manufacturing carpet tiles. Ray was a Georgia native who risked his family's entire savings in the 1970s to start Interface and grew it to a global billion dollar business by the early 1990s. And then he risked it all again because he knew that he could do better, that we can all do better. In 1994, Ray Anderson challenged Interface to go zero. Zero waste to landfill, zero fossil fuels, zero carbon in 1994. And on his journey, he documented more than $400 million worth of savings to Interface. But what he did for the world, he proved the business case for sustainability. So now, corporate sustainability, circular economy, these things are all mainstream around the world and across sectors because Ray Anderson showed us that we can do well by doing good. Ray passed away in 2011, but the legacy continues. He left everything to a family foundation, and his daughter Harriet worked with Georgia lawmakers to dedicate 18 miles of Interstate 85 as the Ray C. Anderson Memorial Highway. This 18 miles of highway this memorial to Ray's pioneering legacy for innovation and the planet has become the real world testing area in the US, one public stage for technology to shine in the world and to prove that we can go to zero in transportation. And the challenge, it's enormous. Transportation accounts for 29% of all greenhouse gas emissions in the U.S. every year. Offsetting or reducing, even eliminating those emissions is very complicated. Think about it. Each of you decides what you drive, when and where you drive. At the Ray, our goals are zero deaths, zero waste, and zero carbon. And we believe the technology already exists to take us there in transportation. Essentially, the Ray Highway has become the nation's premier test bed for sustainable, smart, and safe infrastructure on a public working interstate. Our goals are to demonstrate what works on our test bed and to facilitate projects across the country based on success. Over the last six years, we've developed more than a dozen projects on the Ray Highway through a unique partnership and a formal charter with the Federal Highways Administration and the Georgia DOT. The Ray works with state partners and transportation agencies through an expansion of the P3. We are a public-private philanthropic partnership, and that partnership enables philanthropy through the Ray to allow state DOTs to try new technologies. Let's be honest, trying new technologies especially on interstates and highways, is risky. So the job of the Ray is to mitigate those risks, to enable government to innovate transportation in the real world, and to quickly scale the technologies that perform and succeed. And today, the Ray is working in more than in 15 states with more than two dozen transportation agencies. The projects that we're exporting from the Ray Highway in West Georgia across the country are varied. Connected and autonomous corridors in Texas, 
EV charging hubs in South Carolina. But by far, the most impactful and the most in-demand work that we can offer states is through our partnership with Esri to analyze and plan the highway roadsides for solar energy development. At exit 14 of Interstate 85 on the Ray Highway, five acres of empty and eroded federal right-of-way land now hosts 2,600 solar panels and ground cover that supports wild pollinators like bees and butterflies. This transformation of nothing for transportation into something really special for clean energy and agriculture will deliver benefits for 35 years. And the state DOTs win on day one. Reduced roadside maintenance costs are guaranteed. States can also negotiate land fees, power purchase agreements for lower energy costs, and they can claw back the renewable energy credits for monetizing or for retiring against a carbon mandate. Right-of-way solar is one strategy for states to reduce costs reduce obligations, generate new revenue, diversify transportation funding, and increase the productivity of their assets. In the South, this is what we call a twofer, except way bigger. And it is my joy and my honor to present the work of the Ray to you today, but the main event, what we're here to show you, is the amazing tool that Esri configured and gifted to the Ray to accelerate the adoption of right-of-way solar across the U.S. and around the world. It's through projects like these that we make real progress towards the sustainable development goals around clean energy, clean transport, innovation and infrastructure, and climate action. So let's get to it. Jessica and I are excited to show you how ArcGIS can be used to perform visualization and analysis to support developing solar projects and highway rights of way. The Iowa DOT has 238,000 acres of right of way land. So to find the suitable right of way land, we use some analysis criteria. These are the electric transmission lines in Iowa, and we want to be within five miles of an electric, electric transmission line. So we need to be within the green area. And we also have some exclusion requirements, and for this we used national level data from ArcGIS online. We want to be outside federal lands, protected areas, and urban areas. And we want to be 500 meters away from pipelines, so we buffered for those. And we want to be 20 feet away from railroads. And we merged all of these layers together to create our excluded areas layer. We have to be outside of this red area. So now let's look at the highway criteria. So here are the road center lines in black, and the area in blue is the detailed right-of-way that is published by Iowa DOT. We need to be outside of the highway clear zone, so we'll erase that from the right-of-way. And now let's zoom out and look at the other criteria again. So we need to stay outside of the red area, and we need to stay within the green area. And so this is the final result of our right-of-way land that's available for solar installations. And we can calculate the solar potential for each of these polygons and for all of Iowa. So Iowa has 38,000 acres of right-of-way land available for potential solar installations. Using the rule of thumb calculation that one megawatt of electricity can be generated on five acres of land, Iowa has a solar potential to generate almost five million megawatt hours per year, valued at over $400 million per year. 
So with this analysis, we've started with the state DOT's own data sets. So they have confidence in our underlying assumptions and then practical, safe criteria that helps us to find areas where we should look first. We can get a more accurate measure of solar potential by analyzing the actual solar radiation on the landscape. And to do this, we'll use the Area Solar Radiation Tool. This tool takes an elevation surface as input. So we can use the digital elevation model, which shows only the ground surface. And in the results, we see the areas in red are high solar radiation, mostly on the south-facing slopes. And the areas in blue are lower solar radiation values, found mostly on the north-facing slopes. Or we can use the digital surface model, and this one is derived from a LIDAR point cloud and includes the vegetation and structures on the surface. And you can see how the vegetation affects the solar radiation. And we can clip it to our right-of-way parcels. So look, we have a lot of land to choose from. And to help us prioritize the land, we can use a suitability model. In our model, we favored areas with higher solar radiation, southern aspect or south-facing slopes, followed by eastern and western aspect, and low to moderate slopes for ease of installation and maintenance. And this is our result. The areas in darker green are the most suitable for solar installation. This suitability analysis allows us to leverage elevation and surface modeling plus local solar radiation factors, all combined to prioritize for success and to literally rank sites for suitability. In other words, this analysis takes us from what we could do to what we should do. Now let's focus on this area. Looking at the data in 3D, can help us to understand the landscape. So this is a suitable hillside, and we've added a solar array. Let's zoom in to see the solar panels. Creating a digital twin like this can help us to analyze and plan the development. And it can also help us to find situations that might be less desirable for the community. For example, at the top of this hill, is a scenic overlook. So let's see how the solar panels might affect the visitor's view. We have an interactive view shed tool. And let's say our visitor is six feet tall, and we want to look around 360 degrees, and we want to look out 6,000 feet, and we'll place the visitor on the sidewalk. So what you're seeing in the area is the green is what's visible to the observer, and the area in pink is not visible. And you can see we got problems. The solar panels block the entire view. So what would happen if we removed a couple of rows of solar panels? How would that change the view? So that helps, Jessica. But let's take off a few more rows of solar panels. So now the hillside is visible, and we can zoom down to the ground level, and we can confirm that we cannot see the panels. This is amazing. <laughs> the 3D visualization and the digital twin, it gives us tremendous value with transportation agencies because they can actually see the impact to their asset. Y'all have to remember, solar infrastructure is not native to transportation engineers. These agencies pay a power bill, but that doesn't mean that they necessarily understand renewable energy infrastructure. So the ESRI tool allows our transportation partners to really be in there, and they can assess the impacts not only to their own asset, but they also get a heads up of unintended consequences to the community. Have you ever seen a state DOT try to take a new idea to the community? It's terrifying. 
but this tool gives them a little bit of line of sight, a little bit of heads up of what to expect when they are preparing a new concept for the community. It actually begins to take shape in Esri's digital world. Okay, Jess, let's go farther down the highway. It was a suitable hillside, and we've already added the solar array. So to refine our analysis even further, we want to calculate solar potential based on solar panel installations. And to do this, we created a model. Using our solar radiation raster, we calculate the peak sun hours for each solar panel point. And then we calculate the greenhouse gas equivalencies using the EPA formulas. And the results of the model show us that this solar array has the potential to generate 13,000 megawatt hours per year, valued at $1.2 million just this hillside alone. And it has the potential to power more than 1,200 homes. Using the EPA greenhouse gas equivalency formulas, the carbon reduction from this solar installation is equivalent to avoiding over 9,600 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions. And this is the why. This is the why for our transportation agencies. The raw economic value of the solar, the potential carbon offsets, reasonable equivalencies for taking cars off the road. This is where the rubber meets the road for our transportation partners. So we're at a transformational time in energy and transportation. Bringing more clean energy proximate to the national highway system will be pivotal for the continued electrification of transportation. This is our opportunity to achieve deep decarbonization of energy and transportation simultaneously while also addressing the environmental justice and the equity concerns in the communities living adjacent to our interstates and our highways. So we've seen today how Esri's analysis can help us find and prioritize successful solar developments that will generate new revenues for state DOTs and reduce carbon emissions. And what I want you to think about today, what are the opportunities in your industry? Where's the unused and the forgotten land? And how can that land be switched on for solar power? Thank you so much.